Our next winner in uh, Class A, ladies and gentlemen, it's number 226, a 1912 Delune Belleville Roadster owned by Elizabeth Upjohn from Kalamazoo, Michigan. A rare round radiator Delune Belleville Roadster 1912, our next winner in Class A. Presenting the trophy, Mr. Dwayne Miller. Congratulations, Mike and Pam, and this is a running car. They've passed me a couple times on tours, I know. In your big Oldsmobile, you were passed by a Delune Belleville? Actually, it was a model T. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dwayne. Michael, please tell us about this rare automobile. Uh, it's a foreign make. How did you find the car? Well, it originally came out of the George Waterman collection in the 60s. Uh, he was a collector that went up and down the East Coast during the World War II collecting the very best uh, cars in the country. And he held on to those cars until the end of the war and then started selling them off to collectors. Uh, the Delaney Belleville was a was a car that was owned by kings and queens of France and czars of Russia. It was a very high quality automobile. Did you restore it? Yes, I did. How long did it take? Uh, on and off about 14 years. More, more, more off than on over 14 years. Exactly. What was the most difficult part of the restoration? Uh, the car was very complete. Most of the cars that this George Waterman collected were extremely original very good car so it was mainly just uh, worn out mechanics and cosmetics it's outstanding we're thrilled to have you here at the Meadowbrook Concord d'Elegance with this rare and desirable automobile thank you very much 1912 Delaney Belleville ladies and gentlemen from the Elizabeth Upjohn collection in Kalamazoo Michigan and there's that mother-in-law seat again notice the cane work around the back and the rear mounted spare that's a real rear deck and here's our best in class, ladies and gentlemen, in Class A, antique and vintage through 1924, from Newport Beach, California, one of the most stunning cars on the field today, a 1905 Tenard Levasseur, owned by Rick Rollins, Rick and Lucy Rollins from Newport Beach, California, and what a machine. Ken, here's our best in class. Congratulations. Rick comes from California, that's a good place. As you do. <laughs> right. A lot of Californians here with restorer Stu Laidlaw, I might mention. Seated next to Rick. Well, Rick, welcome to Meadowbrook. Your first time here. Things are going well so far? Well, you assured me it'd be great. It is. It's a wonderful event. Now, uh, this is a Model Q Pennard, one of the uh, most expensive cars available in the world in 1905. That's correct. They built 79 cars, and it costs, by the time you got the custom body on it, about $15,000. In 1905, and this is a Labradette custom double Phaeton or Cape Victoria. Very good memory. Uh, it's basically a Grand Prix race car chassis that the Pinard factory sold, and then you took it to a custom body builder and had a body built. A ten and a half liter engine, do I recall? That's correct. It's ten and a half liter. Uh, it's a T head engine, double chain drive, four speed. It's got everything, except the windshield. Well, I'm the chauffeur, see, and nobody cared about the chauffeur. <laughs> yes, that's right. The uh, master and mistress would be in the back seat. Well, the car will supposedly do 70 miles an hour, but not with me in it. How fast have you had it going, Rick, just out of curiosity? Uh, about 35. You're halfway there. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Rick. It's a magnificent car. Where'd you find it? Believe it or not, I bought it from a guy who lived on my street who inherited it from his grandfather. <laughs> Boy, that was close to home. It was very, very close to home, and it was uh, one of those meant-to-be things. And how long did the restoration take? The, the research took a year, and the French Museum in Malouse, uh, France, was very helpful to us. And then uh, we spent about two and a half years on the restoration itself. And Stu Laidlaw sitting next to you did the, the restoration. It's magnificent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, is this an outstanding automobile? A 10 and a half liter 1905 Canard Lavassour that cost $15,000 when you added the custom built Cape Victoria body all the way from Newport Beach, California. 
owned by Rick and Lucy Rollins, our best in class, Class A. Thanks for coming to the Meadowbrook Concord d'Elegance. First visit here from Newport Beach, California. The most expensive car in the world in 1905. Ten and a half liters. Rick and Lucy Rollins from Newport Beach, California. I'm advised, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that the Phil Hill will be in the art tent at one o'clock. Mr. Phil Hill. America's first world champion driver will be in the art tent signing his new book, Oldsmobile. And our first winner of the day is the 1934 Olds Convertible Coupe, Mr. Tom Goad from Birmingham, Michigan. And Robert Joint from Batavia, Illinois to present the trophy. This is really a marvelous car. Uh, I particularly love the front end design on it. It's an extremely modern automobile for 1934. Extremely rare and just beautiful. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, Bob. Congratulations, Tom. You've helped an awful lot with the Oldsmobiles, but I know this car has been in your family for a long, long time. Could you uh, tell us a little about the story and the history of this car? Well, it's a car that uh, when I was in the Navy on a destroyer that we found in San Diego in 1956. And uh, we were newly married, and we drove it back uh, that summer in August. Uh, it took us five days to get back to my father's house in Bloomfield Hills had it ever since. It's been a real part of the family. And here 40 years later, here you are with a restored car. That's right. I, I think I remember the car was purchased by... Well, it was actually purchased with my wife's savings from uh, teaching school. It was going to be a down payment for our first house. So it was all... Of, all I'm glad that's worked out. This, this time it worked out. It was all of $450 in 1956. And the restoration was just finished, Tom, correct? That's right. We just finished about the 1st of July. It's magnificent. A rare car. Have you seen another one like it? No, I've never seen another convertible. I, I know there's a couple in existence, but this is the only one that I've ever seen. Interesting story. About a week ago, I'm driving down Maple Road, and I noticed this car in front of me. Tom had just picked it up from a restorer, and he ran out of gas and coasted into the gas station, and I was right behind him. <laughs> That's right. Got everything done and forgot the gasoline. Well, it, uh, it quit on me. It was, I was having a little trouble with the electric fuel pump. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, we, the guys all came out and pushed me in. You didn't see me. I'm blocking the lane, I guess. But <laughs> we did uh, get it filled up, and it's been running good ever since. Thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Tom Goad with their freshly restored Oldsmobile 1934 convertible coupe. Just finished a few days ago. It's been in the family since 1954. Darwin Clark, please. Paging Darwin Clark. To the microphone and our next winner in our featured Oldsmobile class. One of our judges, Mr. Dwayne Miller from Birmingham, Michigan, is 1911 Oldsmobile Autocrat Touring. And just about a full load on hand. Boy, you've got a lot of people in there, Dwayne. Presenting the trophy, Alex Mayer from General Motors Corporation, retired. Congratulations. How long did you work on it? Worked on it about five years, but I, uh, professional restorer, finished it up for us. Matter of just so your interest, it was up on top of Pikes Peak two weeks ago. Under its own power. Under its own power. This supposedly has the largest four-cylinder passenger car engine ever made in America. It's, yeah, production. 472 cubic inches. <laughs> How long have you had the car, Dwayne? Since 1975. And you found it where? Uh, Jack Frost, who was an earlier collector, had found it in a barn up in Maine. It's been there for about 45 years, all complete, not too much rust, so it was a nice car to restore. You drive it all over? We drive it all over. It's got about 20,000 miles since restoration. Can you imagine that, ladies and gentlemen? 20,000 miles on this car since restoration. Dwayne and Gene Miller are drivers. They do enjoy them. What was the most difficult? He's putting on his uh, what are, gauntlets. Yeah. No, they're loving, loving gloves, actually. <laughs> okay, I won't touch that one. They're loving gloves for the, okay, for the car. 
What was the most difficult part of this restoration? Oh, good question. It's, it's a heavy, every part is about three times as heavy as other parts, so it's, it's tough, like the transmission weighs a ton, it seems like. Hardest part was probably the engine. And how big is the engine again? It's 472 cubic inches, 7.2 liter, 40 horsepower. Cadillac had a 472 a few years ago. I think this is 473 maybe, I miscalculated. One more, thank you Dwayne. Magnificent 1911 Autocrat, Olds Autocrat. Listen to that power with jump seats and uh, friends and family. Well, it's seven passengers and we have Ford engineers in the back seat and we have a Fiero father type in the, in the jump seats. We've got big collect. We're all humble engineers when it comes to this car. Magnificent. One of our featured Oldsmobiles, ladies and gentlemen, 100 years old. Oldsmobile is this year a 1911 Olds Autocrat Touring.